In the first video of the History of Light series, I talked about how open flame gas street lights were developed, and I showed you one of the few places where you can still find open flame gas lights today. Today, I want to do a quick technical overview of open flame gas street lighting to show you how it measures up using modern metrics and tools. And I think one of the first obvious places to start here is with flicker because flicker is a modern metric that we use to measure how continuous light is over time. Obviously, there's an issue with visible flicker in electric lighting. You don't want it to be flashing before your eyes. Uh, but there's also an issue with invisible flicker where the lighting is flashing maybe a, a bit faster than what you can see, but it could still be causing negative health effects. Things like loss in concentration, headaches, and eye strain. But I thought it would be pretty interesting to measure flicker on open flame gas lights because they obviously flicker just like real fire does because it is real fire. So I used my handy UPR Tech spectrophotometer which also has a flicker measurement function and I was able to get a flicker reading for these lights. And what I got was that the light flashes around 12 times a second, 12 hertz, and the flicker modulation or flicker depth was about 60%. And I did test this multiple times and it was pretty consistent, at least with this meter. So I would say that that's a pretty good reading. So what this is saying is that, yeah, open flame gas lights do have a lot of flicker, not a very practical light source for any illumination purposes, maybe other than navigation. Certainly a modern light source wouldn't have this terrible flicker, but what are you gonna do? It's fire, it's an open flame, it has flicker, We've come a long way since then, but it does look nice uh, in context of modern lighting where visible flicker is usually seen as a malfunction, but the flicker of fire is quite a nice appearance. So the next thing I wanted to look at was the color of the light and the color performance. So I measured the color temperature of the light as 2016 Kelvin, so right around 2000 Kelvin, which is interesting because a lot of times you hear fire quoted as a lot warmer of a color temperature, like 1800 or 1600, but at least according to my meter, uh, it's around 2000 Kelvin for the light. Now in terms of color performance, fire is about as good as you can get, at least according to the modern metrics we use. The number one metric you might hear quoted is CRI, the color rendering index. And most light sources are above 80 these days, so like a typical LED light source might be around 80 CRI, but an incandescent light source might be around 99 CRI. Sunlight might be 99 or 100 CRI. And it turns out that the fire of natural gas street lamps is also 99 CRI, according to my meter. There's a newer color performance metric that's basically a souped up version of CRI. It's called TM30. And the metric that would replace CRI is called RF. The RF value was recorded as 99 on my meter. It only goes up to 100, so again, this is very good. The RG value, this is the gamut metric, which measures how over or under saturated something is, was 99.1, which means that this is just about neutrally saturated. So overall, the quality of light is very, very high, and obviously the color is very warm as it's fire. Obviously the gas street lamps were not very bright. In fact, they were so dim that unless you were standing right next to them, you pretty much couldn't see anything at all. You might be able to make out that there's a person near you, but you couldn't tell who it was, for example, unless you got really close to them. That could be a safety concern, but it's interesting to see how lighting technology has evolved over time. But a more modern concern with lighting is light pollution. We've arguably lit up our nighttime environment too much. Related to light pollution is the amount of blue light produced by this light source. And there's actually a pretty good metric that's starting to get popular in the lighting world called the spectral G index. What the spectral G index basically says is that the higher the number is, the lower the amount of blue light it has relative to the overall color of the light. So to put that into context, an incandescent light bulb has a spectral G index around 1.5, while a daylight color light bulb has a very low spectral G index around maybe 0.5. Our bedtime bulb has less blue light than an incandescent, and the spectral G index is around 1.989. 
I measured the spectral G index of the open flame gas lights as 2.197, meaning that there's still a very small amount of blue light in these light sources, but it's so, so little. And combined with the very dim nature of these light sources, these are probably the least of your concerns in terms of light pollution. In terms of efficiency, open flame gas lights are about as bad as they can get. I couldn't find the exact efficiency numbers online, but from what I can gather, open flame gas lights are around one lumen per watt. For context, many LEDs today are way more than 100 lumens per watt. So in terms of the amount of energy going in to produce this amount of light, Natural gas lights are about the most inefficient light source you can get. And combined with the maintenance factors, the danger of causing fires or gas leaks, things along these lines, it's pretty obvious to see why gas lighting isn't very common anymore, even though it does look very nice. So it's obvious that from a light pollution perspective, these gas lights are pretty good, but from an efficiency, modern perspective, they're about the worst light sources you can get. It's actually ironic that Palmetto Bluff is using fire as its main source of illumination because in the early 1900s when Palmetto Bluff was first developed, it was a vacation property for a wealthy New Yorker. And sometime in the 1920s or 1930s, the main building at the resort burned down and the property sat pretty much vacant for decades. So it's pretty interesting that now they're kind of embracing fire, even though they're in a hugely wooded area and that was ultimately the downfall of the original Palmetto Bluff. So I just thought that was kind of an interesting story. So that's the rundown on open flame gas lighting. Very interesting technology. I'm gonna to continue to do these types of things in future videos. If there's something I didn't cover about gas lights or you want me to clarify, please let me know down below. I can't promise that I'll be able to find really good information on every question that's asked, but I'll do my best. And I'm hoping to do videos like this for the future history of light videos as well. So we'll have the main history and context video and then we'll have one of these more technical videos for the lighting nerds. So thanks so much and I hope you have a great day.